Hello everybody, good morning. Welcome back to another weekly vlog. Today is currently Thursday. I actually just finished editing a video for my main channel and I'm currently waiting for that to export. She's taking her sweet time over there. Um, so I figured that I would hop on. Um, today I am mostly doing like computer work um just finished this editing oh maybe i should edit the last vlog too yeah i might edit another video oh actually i have two videos to edit yeah i might do some more editing today um i also just have some other kind of online work that i need to do um so i don't think i'm really going to be getting ready today i don't see a point of getting ready today so yeah i'm still in my house coat right now um I'm trying to finish my work though because the book of the month March picks dropped today. Today's February 29th. So I'm very eager to see what books um, book of the month has put up for March, but that's gonna be my reward once I'm done all of my work for today. I saw a tiny peek because I just checked if they were up and I saw that there's a fantasy. So I was kind of like, eh. but <laughs> that's fine. How many books is there? Let me just take a little let me just take a little sneaky peeky here. And I'm also reading a fantasy, which I was telling y'all, I haven't started it yet, but um, if you watched the last vlog, I'm going to be starting to read Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher, which is a fantasy um, because it's the Discord book of the, um, what's called book club pick. So I'm gonna be, I'm waiting for mine to come in the mail, but um, how many books is there? Taking a little sneak peek. There's six selections on book of the month so um yeah i'm just kind of saving that for myself to enjoy once i have this video up and once i do i have to do like my patreon schedule and some content planning and stuff like that so um yeah basically just sitting at my computer today is my plan um and i also have plant watering to do so that's gonna be my day and then I'm gonna cook dinner tonight, which what am I even making tonight? Let me check. Last night I made a, um, a stew and tonight I'm making a creamy broccoli soup and that sounds so good. Creamy, cheesy, and even indulgent. You won't believe you're eating broccoli with this soup. The nutty crumbles are the perfect crispy contrast to this luxurious and velvety soup. <clears throat> yummy so yeah i'm gonna make that tonight and then um i think i'm going to place my seed order the other evening i went through and kind of looked at what seeds or like what things that i want to plant because i really need to get my seeds started if i'm going to be doing that like some of them need to be started right now so um I spent a couple of hours doing that the other evening and I like went out and measured all of my garden beds and kind of looked at what which ones need to be replaced which it looks like only one of them is really busted and broken um anyways I need to start spending some of my free time kind of um I don't know why I put that in quotation marks <laughs> I am doing it in my free time um I need to get that order submitted basically so i'm gonna be doing that this evening after i do dinner and everything so yeah that's my little plan for the day when i'm having days like this where i'm just working on editing or admin kind of stuff i also like to get my laundry done because then i don't have to do it on days that i'm filming and it's going to be causing a bunch of background noise and stuff so i'm just going to throw in a load right now to get this laundry done, I'm going to be using a Blue Land laundry detergent tab. Thank you so much to Blue Land for sponsoring today's video. I've been using Blue Land products in my home for about the past year now, and I love them so much. I've been trying to make the switch to getting more sustainable things in my home and also finding products that have ingredients that I feel good about using. I already use their hand soaps, their dishwasher tablets, uh, a variety of their cleaning products, and now I am using their laundry tablets as well. I love that all you have to do is just toss this little guy in. There's no plastic coating or anything like that. Like there is on some other, you know, laundry pod type things. And that's something that I really appreciate about Blue Land is that they use no single use plastic in any component from the product, the packaging, and even the shipping. Even the package that the tablet refills come in is fully compostable. Blue Land offers affordable and effective products. The effectiveness is very important when it comes to cleaning our 
our homes and our clothes and everything and everything that I've tried from them has worked so well. This laundry tablet is proven to lift out the toughest of stains all while being vegan, free of phosphates, chlorine bleach, parabens, and other nasties. You can also save money by purchasing the refills in bulk or setting up a subscription. Blue Land has a special offer for my viewers. All you have to do is click the link down below in the description box and you will get 15% off of your first kit. Thank you so much to Blue Land for sponsoring this portion of the video. Update, it is now 2.11 p.m. And I've been sat here at this table since 8 o'clock or just before 8 o'clock this morning. So it's been, what, six, over six hours of me sitting here. But my video is now live. Um, it took quite a while to do the description box and everything because it was my grow light video where I go through every single grow light in my home. Um, so I had to link everything um, and all the videos I mentioned and everything, but it's done, it's up, I'm feeling good. And, but I'm actually, but I'm definitely just feeling like pooped after that. So I think I'm going to take a little break and check out the book of the month picks. I'm gonna go sit on the couch and kind of relax and um, read some more of the last time I lied. Uh, I am currently 53% through this. I was reading it when I was um, like heating up my lunch and waiting for my video to upload and everything for a few minutes. So I got a couple more chapters in, but I want to just get a little bit further in that today. So I think I'm just gonna take a little break. I think I'm gonna make a matcha, go sit on the couch, get cozy, look at the book of the month picks and then read a couple of chapters of my book and that sounds just like a great time to me so um yeah let's go do it <laughs> Hello everybody, happy Saturday. It is a beautiful sunny Saturday, which is so nice. I actually woke up this morning to snow. I got out of bed and looked out the window and was literally stopped in my tracks. I was so shook. I was not expecting to see snow on the ground, but it's all melted by now, thank goodness. So it's turned into a lovely, lovely day. I spent the morning doing some plant watering. Um, what else did I do? 
that's pretty much it. Just, you know, showered, tidied up. Oh, actually, we played a game this morning. Um, my boyfriend got me a new planty game for Christmas, and um, I think it was on pre-order or something, so it didn't actually come until a few days ago, but I'll show it to you. It was very cute and fun. Oh, Gracie's peering out at us. Um, so this is the game, and I posted this on my story. I took a photo of us playing it this morning um because it was so cute i had my little mushroom teacup and it was just like such a nice and my little ambiance room like garden ambiance room playing on my phone for some background music and um yeah it was just such a nice cozy way to start the morning and then we tore it all down well my boyfriend tore it all down and put it away back into the box and i was like oh shoot i should have taken a clip for the vlog but i didn't um but all the pieces are super cute of course i love the planty theme and it was actually pretty fun so yeah i'm pretty impressed with it the cards are so cute it's fun seeing all the different plants and it was super just like straightforward and easy to learn so if you want something that's kind of like family level board game um for a planty game this one was quite quite fun and enjoyable to play this morning so we did that for a while and then i watered my plants and then um yeah, that's pretty much it. I've just kind of been puttering around this morning. I watered all of the plants behind me, this cabinet and everything, and I just had lunch. And that's pretty much it so far. It's already 1.20, and I think we're about to take the dogs for a WALK, and then I'm gonna film a video for my main channel, I believe. I just wanna wait until a little bit later in the afternoon because right now the sun is just too bright on the table where I want to film. So I have to wait until it travels a little bit more west. Yeah, that's kind of what's up for me today. Um, I did finish, what's it called? The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager and it was pretty good. I ended up giving it four out of five stars. I just, Riley Sager just, yeah, he just does thrillers right, honestly. Um, just the way, like, I just love the way he writes. It's so straightforward, but it's not, too like cheesy or simple like some thrillers the writing is i don't even know i don't want to say basic but i feel like he like his writing is actually quite good and i think it's just getting better and better because last year the only one left like that thriller was insane i was really happy to finish that one really enjoyed it I only have Final Girls to read by him. That's the last one. And I'm gonna, I DNF'd Survive the Night, which is um, the only other one that I guess I haven't fully read. Did not like that one, but I think I have the audiobook um, on hold at the library. So whenever that becomes available, I'm going to try listening to that one because I really do just want to like, I just want to get through that one so that I can you know, have read his whole backlist. I'm so excited for the new Riley Sager book coming out in June. I cannot wait. I will be picking that up like as soon as it becomes available. And then last night, I also finished Educated by Tara Westover. And you guys, that is my first five-star read of the year. Oh my goodness, that memoir. Oh, it was so, so good. I loved it. I loved every minute of it. I was so invested. The last like hour or two of the story, I was literally just sitting, laying there with my headphones on, like just listening to the story, which I usually never do with audiobooks. Like I'm always doing something else, like doing chores or something like that while I'm listening. But I was just, I was so <laughs> just like into this story that I was just sitting there and listening to it because I was just like, I need to finish this. Like I need to just, I need to know. I was just loving the story so much. So yeah five freaking stars oh my goodness i just love memoirs um and reading that one made me really think that i need to read the glass castle because i love that movie so much but yeah oh my goodness what an emotional and moving story just all of the super complex family dynamics and just wow all of the things that this woman went through in her childhood and um yeah it's just such a good memoir. I highly recommend. So now my current read, which I've barely gotten started on. I think I'm two chapters in, but it is The Search Party by Hannah Richel? Richel? I don't know. Um, but this is another thriller, and this is actually, <laughs> ironically, these both became available at the same time, so I'm reading them pretty much back to back, but this is also a, like, camping-oriented 
thriller. Like the setting is like a camp, not not like a summer camp, like the last time I lied, but it's like a camp setting. Um, like their friends are opening some like glamping campground or something and that's where this takes place. Um, which is just kind of funny that I'm reading two thrillers with a similar setting back to back, which I don't love. I don't even really love reading two books from the same genre back to back, but since I have this available on my e-reader right now, I'm just going to try to get through it. There is a ton of characters. Like at the beginning of the book, it gives you a list of all of the characters and like breaks it down by family. And it's like, you get everyone's point of view, which I typically don't really love that in a thriller. Like I kind of get confused when there's so many characters. And because this is on my e-reader, it's more annoying to like go back to look at that list. So I ended up just taking a picture of it with my phone so that I can reference back if I need to. Um, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully I am able to keep up the old, the old noggin, keeps track of everyone. And hopefully it's gonna be good. Also 23 days until I go see Noah Khan, which I'm so excited about. I've just been listening to, um, his album again this morning the whole like full long extended one and oh my gosh it's just hyping me up so much i cannot wait that is gonna be so fun and so good so that is something that i'm really looking forward to this month anyways just wanted to say hello um i'm gonna make some tea so that i can take it with me on our walk and um yeah i'm mostly just gonna be doing work later today but i will pop in if if anything's going going on, going down around here. Just go home from our walk and I've got a package and I think that it is my book. Our Discord book club book for March. Hello everybody, happy Sunday. It is currently a little bit later in the day. It's actually like dinner time. Well, it's 4.40 and I just finished filming a video. I still have a big mess to clean up from that, but I'm taking my little break on the couch right now and trying to decide what I'm gonna do with the rest of my evening. What I wanted to do today 
what I really wanted to do on this lovely Sunday. It's actually horrendous weather, like insane. It was hailing out like crazy. It's just been so dark and like kind of stormy, torrential downpours and then hail. And yeah, it's just been crazy. Um, still a lovely Sunday. <laughs> I love Sundays. Um, even though I usually, like, like I've been saying in the vlog, I've usually been working on Sundays, but it's just, it's kind of nice to just get, like, a head start on the week, and I don't feel the same pressure as I do during the work week. Like, I'm just kind of, like, I don't know, it's just, like, casual work mode Sunday. I don't know what that even means, but it just feels like, oh, if I if I get something done, I get something done, but if not, like, it's fine because it's Sunday, but then I usually end up getting something done anyways. I actually spent the whole entire morning. It took me way longer than I thought it was going to. Oh, I was supposed to edit the vlog. Well, I was supposed to edit the vlog on Friday, okay? Friday evening, and then I like to have it edited and then have it up for early access on Patreon didn't get it done on Friday evening and then I was like it's fine I'll do it on Saturday did I do it yesterday no I did not I put it off until this morning and my vlogs go live on Sundays so oh my goodness I shouldn't have done that because just for the like weekend away footage like I took a bunch of different little clips um like when we were just like in the cabin or like on little walks and like on the drive there and stuff just those clips which make up like kind of a small portion like they don't even add up to that much time and just those clips there was over a hundred of them so I imported all those clips and I was like oh dear <laughs> so it obviously took me quite a while to edit because there was other clips of just like me talking and stuff on top of that so I was working on that from about 7 a.m till 1 p.m and then I had lunch and then um I've been filming for my main channel so it's been a productive day but the thing that I wanted to make time for today, which I was just talking about, was to make, bake, a lemon loaf, which you might be thinking, I've never seen you bake before, Fern, and you'd be correct, because I do not bake, I'm not a baker, I mean, I've made, like, muffins a couple of times before, which is actually really good, and I should do that again, but as for, and then I made cupcakes once, if you've been on the vlog channel for a while, I think that I have a vlog where I made them for my boyfriend's birthday, like, last year, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess it was just last year. But other than that, like, I just don't bake. I cook a lot, um, but I just, I'm not a baker. I don't know. It intimidates me. And then I'm like, what am I going to do with all of this stuff? Like, I don't know. It's not as utilitarian, I feel, as cooking. Like, cooking it's very purposeful but baking i'm like oh this is just like a luxury thing but what a fun cozy task to do on a sunday you know so i'm kind of wanting to try to branch out and just like make bake some little things over the weekend because i think that that would be really nice and just you know a nice fun thing to do plus you get like a little treat out of it sounds great to me and i love lemon loaf um, I'm not like a huge sweets person, which is probably also why I've never really been into baking, but I've just been stuck on this lemon loaf idea. <laughs> I've had it in my head for the past few days, so I decided I was going to do it today. Um, and I actually have all the ingredients, which is so crazy that I just, the recipe I found, I have every single ingredient, like no problem. And then I was just thinking maybe I'll just get set up and I'll be able to do that. But the one thing that I'm missing is the loaf pan. I do not have the 9x5 loaf pan that I need, and I have, like, even though I don't bake that much, I have, you know, different baking pans and muffin tins, and, like, I have some supplies, but apparently not a loaf pan, which makes sense because I've never made a loaf before. However, I am supposed to go get groceries tonight. It's something that I wanted to get done today, so I'm thinking if I go and get the groceries, I can pick up a loaf pan and then come home and just put the groceries away and um go ahead and bake my lemon loaf so i'm kind of thinking that that's going to be my plan for tonight also i was looking through your comments on the last vlog that i posted the weekend away one which thank you guys so much you always just leave like the nicest comments um but i just saw that somebody commented okay so i was talking about educated the memoir that i just read that i gave five stars to that i loved um by tara westover 
somebody commented on the last vlog and said that her mom wrote a rebuttal memoir so it's like her version of the events which allegedly is like not true and just like gaslighting and it's like full of one star reviews on, on goodreads and i was so shook when i saw that i immediately googled it i was like no freaking way like the drama that is so juicy what the heck what the heck i honestly can't believe that and then i came across this article i haven't read it yet but i just opened it on my phone and it's like just kind of going over like her family's reactions kind of like updates to the memoir i guess like what happened after the fact so now i'm just falling down this rabbit hole of this woman's family drama after reading educated <laughs> that is just so insane that her mom did that though she's like i just want to set the record straight it's like what what are you talking about sit down sit down she's like trying to gaslight her children like oh no you didn't actually have this like traumatizing childhood anyways that just blew my mind so <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you about it oh my gosh i'm also supposed to paint my nails tonight shoot i better get moving here um okay i'm gonna go clean up my filming mess and then I guess I'm gonna get ready to go get groceries. I'm not really in the mood to get groceries. Oh yeah, and in the Goodreads reviews, there's like family members leaving reviews, like commenting, calling her out, saying this isn't true. They're like, I was there and these things that she's saying aren't true. Like I witnessed this abuse happening firsthand and the mom is basically lying. Like the tea, the tea is piping hot. Okay, the loaf is now in the oven baking. So I thought, what better time than now to do a little book haul. And I know, I know, another book haul. I'm on track to be doing book hauls in like every second vlog and I'm not sorry about it. In my defense, these are the books that I was talking about a couple of vlogs back um, that are from Valentine's Day, a Valentine's gift. Was it Valentine's? Yeah, Valentine's gift. And then the other ones, I, well, here's the thing. I meant to buy these books with a gift card that I had because I have, oh my goodness, I have a whole bunch of gift cards for the bookstore stacking up now. Um, some of them are from Christmas and some of them are from my credit card points because instead of doing something responsible with those points, like my boyfriend will use his credit card points for like gas cards for, for us to get gas from the gas station and you know things like that but me i'm like no no give me the bookstore gift card please <laughs> anyways so i had a whole bunch of um gift cards 
So I was like, okay, perfect. I'm gonna pick myself out a few books since we're here picking up my little Valentine's Day book anyways. And then we went to the till and I was paying and I don't know what happened. I just like glitched and I could not find any. Well, here's the thing. I have a new wallet that my mom gave me um, <laughs> for Christmas. It's really cute. It has like little forest animals on it. Um, and I had transferred all of my like cards, like all of my stuff from my old wallet into my new one obviously but i don't know where everything is in the new one yet and apparently i put the gift cards in like a hidden little pocket not actually hidden but i just couldn't find it in the moment and then i was trying to dig out all my gift cards while the lady was waiting for me to pay and then i felt so under pressure and then i just could not like i for the life of me i could not find those gift cards so i had to just buy the books but you know what i just have gift cards to use later so it's fine they will get used obviously <laughs> Anyways, very dramatic story about me checking out with these books. Oh my gosh, why is my memory card flashing? Okay, so long story short, I've had these books for a few weeks now and I keep forgetting to um, tell y'all about them. So I'm going to do so right now. The first one, and this is the one that was my Valentine's gift from my partner. I really wanted this book mostly because the cover just drew me in. I love this cover so much, but then when I learned what the plot is and heard about it a little bit more, I thought that it sounded really interesting. Hello, Monk. Do you want to say hello? Do you want to say hello? Do you want to tell them that you're doing so well? Do you want to tell them that you've had your teeth brushed for a week now? Do you want to tell them how good you're being with it too? And you let your mommy and daddy get in your mouth and brush your TVs every night? Yeah. Yeah, our toothbrushing has been, actually been going better than I thought. Like, it's going okay. So I'm very happy about that. Anyways, I'm so sorry. Oh my goodness, so many distractions right now. The first book is Whale Fall by Daniel Krauss. And this is a kind of, first of all, just like the cover, I, c I cannot, this cover is so, so cool. I'm very interested in just like deep sea, like I love kind of, I don't know, horror stuff set in the ocean. Like I'm so scared of the ocean, I love it. I respect it, but it is terrifying. Um, so when I saw this cover, I was like, oh my goodness, this looks absolutely epic. For It's just beautiful. So what this is about, it's like a sci-fi thriller novel and a guy is, I don't even know, is he just scuba diving or what is he doing? He's on some like exploration. Okay, here, they have a little blurb. So let me just read that to you rather than me like blundering through it. A scuba diver is swallowed by an 80 foot, 60 ton sperm whale and has only one hour to escape before his oxygen runs out in this gripping, moving and scientifically accurate novel. So scuba diver gets swallowed by this whale and apparently it's oh yeah that's right okay he's diving down to try to find the remains of his father who passed away um because he has some like complicated relationship with him and he's carrying all this guilt so he dives down and tries to find him and then he gets swallowed by this whale and then apparently it's like a thriller but also it's like him working through his daddy issues inside this whale and some people in the reviews did not like that aspect of it but me i'm like sign me up daddy issues yes please i've got some myself and i like hearing about other people's as well yeah this is a beautiful hardcover as well because it is a new release i think um and yeah i'm just i don't know like how fun is this and just even if it's not that good honestly i just it's so beautiful i'm just obsessed with the cover art yeah i love it and it's blurbed by jillian flynn on the front so that's promising okay and then next i actually have a lighter read which i don't normally buy books like this but i've heard good things about this one and the premise just really spoke to me um and it's highly reviewed on Goodreads. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna pick it up. Um, and that is The Good Part by Sophie Cousins. So this is a story about a girl in her mid twenties who's just kind of down on her luck. She's not happy in her job. She's not having any success in her love life. And she's basically just like, bleh, about life. And she ends up making a wish for her to skip to the good part of her life. And then of course it comes true and she wakes up and it's I think 16 years in the future. Yeah, so she just wakes up the next morning and she's in her mid 40s. She has kids and a husband. So she's basically just like plopped down into this life with everything she's ever wanted. 
I just think that this sounds like a fun story with a really important message to just appreciate what we have in this moment. And the parts of our life that are so full of struggles are so important because they allow us to appreciate the parts of our life that are, you know, good or better. It's really difficult to um, be grateful and like fully appreciate good things and the joyful parts of life without the not so good and the even painful parts. So yeah, I don't know. I just, will I like this? I hope so. You guys know I'm not always super keen on these fluffy ones, but the thing is I'm always like, oh, this premise sounds so good. But then of course there's probably going to be like romance in here and I'm just not really a big romance person, but who knows? It says warm, funny, joyful, and wise. I think I might actually, um, I'm like thinking about what books I want to read for March. I kind of want to plan out a TBR for March because I'm just really trying to, I was really falling behind on my Goodreads goal, which I know I'm not, I'm trying not to focus on my Goodreads goal and like stress myself about it, but I was really falling behind and now I'm almost caught up. I think I'm only one book behind. Um, so I don't know. I just want to keep up, keep this, Keep up, what's this ver the saying? Keep the steam going, something like that. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, next is a book that I've heard a lot of people talk about, and this was actually on a lot of people's top books of 2023, which always makes me keen, like when there's, you know, a whole bunch of people that seem to really just love a book. And honestly, I've been kind of curious about it as well, but since I've been hearing so many good things, I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna pick it up. And that is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. And first of all, cover art, like so, so gorgeous. The vibes are immaculate. Everything about this, like even the fonts are just so, so pretty. I love the way that this looks, it's gorgeous. Okay, there's another little blurb. I love when they do just these little paragraphs that just like summarize what it's about without giving too much away. It says, a curmudgeonly professor journeys to a small town in the far north to study fairy folklore and discovers dark fae magic, friendship, and love in the start of a heartwarming and enchanting new fantasy series. So this um, is book one and book two just came out really recently, like maybe a month or two ago. I love this kind of magical realism, studying fairies, uh, like plot line that this book has, but I also really like the sounds of the character, so I'm hoping that I will enjoy this character, but it says, Cambridge professor Emily Wilde is good at many things. She is the foremost expert on fairies. She's a genius scholar and a meticulous researcher who is writing the world's first encyclopedia of fairy lore, but Emily Wilde is not good at people. She could never make small talk at a party or even get invited to one and she prefers the company of her books, her dog Shadow, and the fair folk to other people. I find that I tend to really like books that have these kind of socially awkward, introverted main characters because I can just relate to that more as like such a big introvert and homebody myself. So that is another thing that really spoke to me when I was um, looking up that book. And then the last one that I got is a fun one. It is We Sold Our Souls by Grady Hendrix. I am building up my Grady Hendrix collection. I have, do I have all his books now? Oh my gosh, I honestly think that I might have all of them now, which is so crazy because I got two of his other ones for Christmas and then I already had two. So that's all of his like kind of like this kind of like horror books. He's written some, a couple of other books, but um, for the ones that I want to collect, I think that I have them all now, which is so crazy. So this is, of course, another one of his horrors. And this one is centers around like a heavy metal band, which sounds fun. So yeah, I'm excited to read this whenever I get around to it. I love his horror because, well, his writing is just like so, it's so clever, it's so sharp, it's so witty and funny, but his horror novels, all the ones that I've read so far at least, always have a deeper message, which is something that I really appreciate, especially in the horror genre, and I just think that he does it so well. Like, he's just, I freaking love Grady Hendrix so much, so, um, and I never see this one in bookstores, so when I saw this and it was the only copy, I was like, I'm just gonna grab it. 
Um, I probably would have waited if I would have known that I wasn't <laughs> gonna be actually paying with my gift cards because the reason I grabbed these three books is because I thought I was gonna be using my gift card and then I could not find my gift card. And then of course we like left the store and I was like, oh, here's all of my gift cards, but secretly kind of happy because now I still have my gift cards to spend. Oh my goodness, okay. Anyways, just wanted to fill y'all in and maybe later, or should we just do it now? Maybe I'm gonna clean up um, this mess because I still have some like dishes and stuff to put away from making that loaf. Um, but maybe after I do that, we will pick out some books for my March TBR. I've decided what books I'm gonna read in March or at least I'm gonna try I don't typically I don't think I've ever done like a set TBR but I kind of want to try it out for March and see how it goes so the first book is the one I'm currently reading which is the search party that's on my Kobo and I'm currently 10% of the way through I don't really have any thoughts on this yet like I need to get into it a little bit further I still don't even really know what it's about it's a bunch of like old friends like groups of families go and meet at this campground that one of them is opening and something bad happens and they're trying to figure out who did it i don't know um not loving it but not hating it like i just i just need to read more i feel very neutral about it right now um and then the next one that i've put on my tbr is the housemaid secret by frida mcfadden which is the sequel to the housemaid these are super, super quick popcorn thrillers, um, which is why I picked it because I honestly will be able to get through this in like a couple of days. So that's just going to boost up my Goodreads <laughs> reading goal thing um, because I don't wanna be falling behind. It's just gonna be a quick read and I am really looking forward to reading this one because it's not spoiled for me and I really liked The Housemaid, but it was spoiled for me. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really excited to jump into that one. Y'all know I love a thriller. And then the next one, I'm actually so, so excited to finally be getting around to this book. I bought this like a year ago and I've heard, I've heard polarizing things. People love it, people hate it and think it's boring. I am just very curious, like it sounds, it, I don't know, I don't know, I honestly don't know if I'm gonna love it or hate it, but it is Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry, and this is, oh, oh my gosh, there's photos in here, oh, how cute, that's me and the girls camping last, wait, is that last year? No, two years ago, oh my gosh, my hair was so short, that's so cute, those are just randomly tucked in this book, um, Anyways, yes, this is a cozy fantasy about uh, some fantasy creatures. What is she? Orc. An orc that is retiring from like adventuring and battle and doing high fantasy things. She's retiring to open a coffee shop, but in this fantasy land, nobody really knows what coffee is. So she's like trying to introduce everyone to coffee and they're like making different little coffee drinks and yummy baked goods. It's very slice of life and just supposed to be like a comforting little read. So I'm very, very curious about it and excited to read that one. Next, we of course have Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher, which I've talked a little bit about on here already or the last vlog, perhaps. I can't even keep track of what, what is in what vlogs anymore, but this is the Discord book club pick. Uh, it is fantasy. It is like a quest fantasy. She's going on, she's going to rescue her sister or something. She has to complete three impossible tasks. It's supposed to be dark fairy tale vibes and, um, so far, the reviews on the Discord, I just peeked and people are like just starting to read it. So there isn't anything like any crazy thoughts developing yet, but um, a couple people have said that it's a little bit confusing at the beginning. So I am afraid, but I'm gonna give it a go anyways. 
if you're new here, my brain has a hard time computing fantasy sometimes. Like, I really want to love it, but I just, yeah, it's too much for me sometimes. And then the last book that I'm putting on my TBR, so I picked five, um, but like reading books, like physical books or ebooks that I'm actually gonna have to like sit and read. And then I'd like to also read one or two audiobooks, one at least, um, but hopefully two, we'll see. Um, but the last physical book that I picked is The Women by Kristen Hanna, which was my book of the month pick last month. Um, and this is going to be my first experience with Kristen Hanna, although I'm very keen on several of her books, to be honest. I also have The Four Winds, but I want to pick up The Nightingale and um, what's called The Great Alone. Those are really highly reviewed and like beloved novels of her as well, which it sounds like all of her stories are like these sweeping, hard hitting emotional journeys. And that just sounds very up my alley. So I think that I'm going to love her writing. I really hope that I do, considering I already have two of her books and I am keen to pick up at least two more. But this one takes place during the Vietnam War. I think that our main character is in nursing school or a nurse or something like that. And her brother is sent to war. So she ends up also enlisting and kind of following him there. And it just tells us her experience in the war and the experience of just other women that were involved um, in the Vietnam War. And yeah, it's supposed to be really good, had great reviews. So yeah, looking forward to that one. We'll see how I do with these. Wish me luck. I'm really gonna try to make reading a priority because I find that when I actually, like I bring my book out into the living space during the day so that when I have like little breaks between my work or whatever I'm doing, I'm not tempted to pick up my phone and I'm instead tempted to pick up a book because I did that when I just finished um, The Last Time I Lied and I was surprised. Like I kept just reading it whenever I had a few minutes like in between anything I was doing and um, I got through that book so fast so I'm like, okay, if I just like on booktube, oh, there's like a popular challenge that people do and it's um, switching my screen time for reading time where they try to, instead of like being on their phones, try to read and like match up the same amount of time with reading that they would normally be like scrolling on their phones. Anyways, the point of it is that we like so many times throughout the day, we're just like doom scrolling or just like, you know, wasting our time online when we could be doing other things like our hobbies and in my case reading all these books that i really want to read so um yeah i'm gonna be focusing on trying to make it more priority in march and yeah we'll see how how we go with these books Okay y'all, just got out of the shower and I'm sitting down to, by the way, the lemon loaf tasted really good, which makes it even more unfortunate that it was just <laughs> undercooked. Um, but yeah, it was so yummy, despite some of it being like soggy. Um, anyways, I am all, all my like bedtime stuff, skincare and everything is done and I'm just sitting down to do my nails. So I'll show you the color that I've picked out um, for this week. It's Petals for Narcissist. And I'm just finding my video that I'm gonna be watching. I'm gonna be watching Olivia Reads a Latte. And my man is making me my bedtime tea. So things are, things are good right now. Okay got that queued up right there and where am I even gonna put you I don't know oh my gosh the battery's dying again what the heck okay so this is a new one also from the uh, seasons of Persephone collection and I keep seeing this one on insta and I've been dying to try it oh my gosh it's this beautiful um, 
like shifty kind of like iridescent purpley color. I'm so excited to see what this looks like on my nails. 